Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm still Seth Monahan for better or for worse, and you just tuned in for video number 25 in my series on classical harmony and counterpoint. In this lesson, we're going to learn about leading tone seventh chords. Now, what does that mean? Well, as their name suggests, these are seventh chords whose root is the leading tone of the key. So seventh chords with the Roman numeral seven. And it turns out these have different qualities in major and minor. In major keys, they're going to be half diminished seventh chords. And then in minor keys, they're going to be fully diminished seventh chords. Now, you may have this dim memory that there's actually another Roman numeral seven chord in minor. That's the one built on the subtonic, in this case, B flat rather than B natural. We don't want anything to do with that chord. Our business today is with chords whose root is the actual leading tone of the key. And to get us rolling, as usual, I want to start with a musical example. This is the slow movement from Haydn's fifth Opus 17 string quartet. And when we listen, I want you to simply follow the bass line to see if this scale degree pattern looks familiar. Ask yourself, what does this bass line seem to be telling me about the harmonies or harmonic functions that are in play here? Well, I hope you noticed that we've seen everything here before. These are patterns we've seen a million times. Uh, and we can make some educated guesses about what kind of harmonic functions this bass line is going to support. That first segment, 1, 7, 1, 2, 3, is probably going to support alternating tonics and dominants. And then the second segment, 4, 5, 1, is probably going to be a standard cadence formula. And I bet you're not shocked to find out that these educated guesses turn out to be mostly right. In that opening segment, we've got scale degrees 1 and 3 supporting 1 and 1 6. And then in the cadential progression, we've got scale degree 4 supporting root position 4, scale degree 5 supporting cadential 6 4 resolving to 5 7. And then scale degree one, supporting a tonic that is decorated with non-chordal suspensions of the sort we studied in video 23. But that still leaves two chords, the ones over scale degree seven and scale degree two. Let's take our time with these. They both contain the leading tone F sharp, so they are probably indeed dominants of some sort. But we've still got a bunch of options. Over the past nine videos, I've been training you to expect that if these chords are triads, they're probably going to be 5, 6, and 7, 6, respectively. And if they're seventh chords, they're probably going to be inversions of 5, 7, 5, 6, 5, and 5, 4, 3. Well, these are seventh chords, but they still warrant a closer look. Let's start with that chord that might be 5, 6, 5, the one with scale degree 7 in the bass. Now, if this seventh chord were 5, 6, 5 in G minor, it would be spelled D, F sharp, A, C. The problem is there's no D here. We've got F sharp, A, C, and E flat. So if you stack that in thirds, it's easy to see that F sharp, the leading tone, is the root. So this isn't any kind of five chord, it's some kind of seven chord. More specifically, it's seven diminished seven. Now, that's not a chord from the big 18, but it's really similar to one that we know well, 565. Five. It's got the same bass note as 565. Five. It shares three notes with 565. Five. It has a dominant function like 565, five, and it's doing a thing that 565 five does all the time, which is to sit between two root position tonics. So let's put a pin in that and then look at the other unidentified dominant chord, the one that's above scale degree two. Now, a quick look shows us that this chord has the same notes as the last one, F sharp, A, C, and E flat. So it can't be five, four, three. It's gonna be another seven diminished seven chord. But now the chordal third, A, is in the bass, making this seven diminished six, five. 
But again, it's only one note off from the chord we were expecting, and it does pretty much the same thing. In this case, it connects one and one six with a stepwise bass. So let's take a step back and summarize what we just learned, because there were four important takeaways here. First, in any key, the leading tone seventh chord, seven diminished seven, seven half diminished seven, is going to share three notes with five seven, including that all important leading tone. Second, because of this, leading tone seventh chords also tend to carry a dominant function. And then third, because of this shared function, leading tone seventh chords are often used in exactly the same way as inverted five sevens with the same bass note. But there's a catch though. Unlike pretty much every functional chord we've studied so far, leading tone seventh chords don't play the same role in major and minor keys. The difference is this. Leading tone sevenths are extremely common in minor keys, but they're extremely rare in major ones. In other words, we're going to see seven diminished seven all the time in minor, but we're almost never going to see its cousin seven half diminished in major. So most of this video is going to focus on seven diminished seven in minor, but at the very end, I'll give you an example of seven half diminished seven in major. So now I want to look really systematically at point number three here, the idea that seven diminished seventh chords are used in the same way as inverted five sevens with the same bass note. Another way of saying this is that for every inversion of five seven, there's a roughly equivalent seven diminished seven chord, one that has the same bass note and does more or less the same thing most of the time. Let me show you what I mean. Here are the three inversions of five seven in the key of C. When we have scale degree seven in the bass, we have five six five. When we put scale degree two in the bass, we have five four three. And when we put scale degree four in the bass, we have five four two. And to turn any of these chords into its seven diminished seven equivalent, all we have to do is replace scale degree five, which I've shown here in red, with scale degree six. So starting with five six five, if we take five six five and move its root, the red G, up by step to A flat, we now have seven diminished seven, which has the same bass note and the same function as five six five. So everything we know about how five six five gets used also applies to seven diminished seven. It doesn't matter that the chords have different roots. Doesn't matter that they're technically in different inversions. What matters is the same bass note and the same function. And it's the same thing as we go down the line. If we take five four three and replace scale degree five with scale degree six, we get seven diminished six five, which gets used exactly the same way as five four three. And then finally with five four two, we take that G, move it up a half step, and we've got seven diminished four three, which is its close cousin and functional equivalent. Now let's talk about voice leading. It's convenient for us that a lot of the voice leading rules we know about dominance also carry over into seven diminished seven including the fact that we only need one set of voice leading rules to cover every inversion of the chord. So seven diminished seven is built from scale degrees seven, two, four, and six. And the three notes it has in common with inverted five sevens all behave the same way. Scale degree seven wants to go up by step. Scale degree four wants to go down by step. Scale degree two can go in either direction, although now it tends to prefer to go up to scale degree three. And that leaves scale degree six, which is a new note. It's not in five seven, and it wants to go down by step because it's a chordal seventh, and that's what chordal sevenths do. So if we go back to Haydn, we find that his voice leading is entirely by the book here. Red scale degree seven goes up, blue scale degree two goes up, Yellow scale degree four goes down, purple scale degree six goes down as well. And by putting scale degree six in the melody, Haydn reminds us why composers use this chord. They use it because it lets them put a dominant function under scale degree six. Until now, we've only seen scale degree six in chords with predominant or subdominant functions. Now we get to support scale degree six with a super crunchy dominant.
And then Haydn's next two bars are no less by the book. Now he puts the leading tone in the melody, an octave higher than it was before, but it does the same thing, and so does everyone else. Blue scale degree 2 goes up, yellow scale degree 4 goes down, and purple scale degree 6 goes down as well. Check it out. Now I want to go back to our equivalence table for just a second. We've seen 7 diminish 7, which acts like 565. Five. We've seen 7 diminish 65, which acts like 543. And in a second, I'll show you an example of 7 diminish 43. But first, I want to clear up one point. If you've paid really close attention, you'll notice that there's an inversion of 7 diminish 7 that I haven't even mentioned yet. It's 7 diminished 42, which has scale degree 6 in the bass. Notice that there is no 5-7 equivalent for this because no 5-7 chord has scale degree 6 in the bass. It's not even a note in 5-7. Well, I'm bringing that chord up here just to point out that it doesn't really ever get used. I just didn't want you thinking I forgot about it. So now we can check in on 7 diminished 4-3, which has scale degree 4 in the bass and which acts just like 5-4-2, which means it's probably always going to resolve to 16 Here's a theme from Haydn's Symphony Number no. 78 in C minor. And I should say up front, the bass line is a little tricky to pin down in here. The previous bar had a low C natural in the bass, and that's sort of still in our minds here, even if it's not actually in the score, but it's going to make bar one a root position tonic chord. And then the bass line that follows isn't just a bass line, it's also an echo of the main melody. Notice how the two bar opening idea reappears almost immediately in the lowest voice. So we need to decide which notes of that motive are the quote-unquote real bass line. And it ends up being the downbeats. So we have scale degree 4, F, going to scale degree 3, twice. And over those scale degree 4s, we find 7 diminished 4, 3, resolving to 1, 6, twice. And then after that, there's a standard 4-5-1 cadential formula, predominant, dominant, tonic, where the actual chords are flat 2-6, a chord we don't know yet, then 5, decorated by a cadential 6-4, and finally tonic. Have a listen. <laughs> So at the start of the video, I promised that we'd see one quick example of 7 half diminished 7, that rarely used leading tone 7th chord in major. That's going to be our last thing. But first, I need to make two quick points. Number one, we only find this chord in root position. It doesn't really get inverted. And number two, scale degree 6 is virtually always in the melody. So we'll see this in the opening theme from Mozart's G Major Piano Concerto, but before we listen, I want to give you a quick overview of the theme since it's long and it doesn't all fit on the screen at once. Um, the excerpt is a large sentence with a weird harmonic design. The basic idea goes from 1 to 4, 6, 4, which has a subdominant function, and then the repetition does the same thing in reverse, taking us back to 1. The second part of the sentence starts with a strong dominant function, it goes to a weak tonic, back to the strong dominant, and then Mozart sets up the cadential cycle with the chord we're looking for. 7 half diminished 7, which resolves to 1 and then moves through the standard cadence routine. Let's have a listen. <laughs> So right there is our 7 half diminished 7 chord, and you'll notice that the voices behave exactly like they do in minor. Scale degrees 7 and 2 go up, and scale degrees 6 and 4 go down. So, And that's all I've got for you today. This is a short one. In our next video, we'll start learning about what are called secondary or applied dominant chords. I will see you then.